Okay, this is our second of two PowerPoints on uh, animal evolution. And this one is going to focus on human evolution, which was another topic that Darwin was very interested in. And uh, so this is kind of where do we come from? This is our, what is the biological origin of human beings? So it's a, a question that, that Darwin had and many people had. And in science, we look for evidence. And so we can't turn the clock back, but we can look for shared features and we can examine living and extinct animals as well as human. And we're going to look at anatomy, behavior, ecology, and increasingly genetics and other fields. Um, and so we want to place humans with animals. And, and so we're kind of looking at, at kind of our shared features. So first of all, humans are clearly vertebrates okay we have the four basic features okay we show them uh, most clearly when we form as an embryo we have a dorsal hollow nerve cord that swells in the anterior part to become our brain early in the embryo we form a notochord which is replaced by vertebrae we have pharyngeal pouches that uh, develop into th things like the thyroid gland and the larynx and things like that. And we have a post-anal tail. So it can be seen clearly in the embryo, but can also be seen in our tailbone. Okay, We are clearly vertebrates. We have bone. We have vertebrae. Uh, we have a spinal cord that passes through the vertebrae. We have a really well-developed head like all other vertebrates that contains a brain enclosed in a skull and sense organs. Okay, even more clearly, we are mammals. We have hair, or at least I used to. Well, I still have hair, it's just coming in other places. Okay, uh, humans have mammary glands. We give birth to live young, which are nourished by a placenta as the mother carries them, and then are nourished by the mammary gland after birth. We have special teeth like all mammal, specialized teeth like canines, incisors, and molars. And like all mammals, we have large brains and flexible behavior. Okay, even among the mammals, we are most clearly related to the primates. All primates have grasping fingers and toes. They all have forward directed eyes that have binocular vision and good color vision. All primates have large brains. Among the primates, we're most closely related to the hominoids. Hominoids are a small group that includes orangutans, chimpanzees, um, uh, gorillas, and I think, is it mangabees? Maybe, I don't know. But uh, no, gibbons. Gibbons are, are hominoids. And they all have grasping hands with opposable thumbs. They have fingernails, not claws, all of them. None of them have a visible tail that's external, but they all have really large brains for animals, very adaptable behavior. They are all live in groups that have very few offspring that have long childhoods and live long lives. Among the living animals, we are most closely related to chimpanzees and gorillas. We share lots of anatomy. And as we learn more and more about these animals, we share lots of features with them, okay? Even, even features like behavioral features, like the ability to learn language. Chimpanzees have been taught sign language. They've been taught uh, uh, to use language using a computer keyboard. Uh, chimpanzees have been taught to use tools and have been observed using tools and weapons in the wild. And then of course, to, we have, uh, we're very close to them in genetics. And then even more interesting is there are a series of fossil intermediates that are clearly more closely related to modern humans than chimpanzees or gorillas, but are extinct. These are mostly African hominoids that occur in a time sequence anywhere from about 5 million years ago to about 40,000 years ago. They have features that are more distinctly human than, than any living primate. What are these human features? Well, one is to walk upright. They're bipedal. They only use their hind limbs for walking and then their forelimbs are free. No living ape does this, but lots of fossil hominoids do this. 
And well, you can say, how do we know? Well, we can look at their skeletons. When you walk upright, that changes your knee and foot structure. Uh, it changes the limb proportions and the structure of the pelvis and the curvature of the spine. And the opening of the skull migrates so that the head assumes a different position. And then, of course, we have fossil tract waves that are too old for modern humans to have made, but clearly made by a very similar animal to us. Okay. Another really important feature is that we have the skulls of many of these extinct hominoids, and they show increasing similarity to our skull. A chimpanzee has a brain of about 400 cubic centimeters. Our brains are about 1,500 cubic centimeters, much larger, but some of these skulls approach 1,500 cubic centimeters. We also have very small teeth compared to chimpanzees and gorillas, and these animals too rely less and less on their teeth. Um, these, some of these have small brow ridges like us, fatter, flatter faces, and they develop a forehead and a chin, kind of like us. In addition, there's evidence that these fossil hominoids had behavioral traits that we had, that they extensively used tools to sh and shaped those tools, that they buried their dead, that they made cave art, that they made necklaces, <laughs> Uh, that they made string, and that they may have used language. We know that some of the apes used tools, but not tools that were fashioned like uh, arrowheads and things like that. These are, are really things that far more closely resemble modern humans than any modern ape. Okay, so who are these uh, fo extinct fossil hominoids? Well, one of them uh, was Australopithecus afarensis. This is a famous uh, fossil find called Lucy. She's about three to four million years old. She was clearly bipedal, but she, uh, she had a cranium more like a chimpanzee, a brain not much larger than modern chimps. Uh, she had a face more chimp-like, uh, big brow ridges, things like that. There really wasn't much evidence that, that these guys used tools or that they had language or advanced things, but they were clearly bipedal. Okay. After Lucy, about a million and a million and a half years after that, uh, much more similar to us species came around, Homo erectus. Homo erectus lasted a long time, from about two million years ago to less, maybe less than 300,000 years ago. The cranial capacity of Homo erectus was almost halfway, exactly halfway between chimpanzees and modern human cranial capacity. And these guys made arrowheads. They, they sat around fireplaces, they used fire, and they were clearly bipedal, almost as tall as we are, and kind of designed to run. Okay. Even more intriguing are Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, or some people just say Homo neanderthalensis. These are the Neanderthals. Uh, they appeared maybe a half million years ago to uh, lasted to maybe 20,000 years ago and their cranial capacity was even bigger than ours. Here's a, a Neanderthal skeleton next to a modern human skeleton. You can see they're shorter than us, but much stockier. They were bipedal. They, again, made stone tools, uh, used fire, lived in shelters. There, we know they used uh, caves to make art. We know that they uh, made beads for necklaces or, or uh, some sort of decoration. Um, we, we know lots about them because we have lots of remnants of them and we know about their diets and, and things that they did. Modern humans, archaic humans, first appeared about 160 to 200,000 years ago in Africa. Their cranial capacity was slightly below ours, but close to ours. And they had modern human anatomy when it came to the spine, the, the hips, the shoulders and things like that. There's a wealth of genetic evidence that connects us to these earlier groups, um, to Homo erectus, to Neanderthals, and to another species called the Denisovans. Um, and we've actually been able to sequence DNA from these uh, fossils that we've collected. And we can tell that they split from humans about 400,000 years ago. There is even evidence of interbreeding between humans and Neanderthals. Some traits that we see in certain human populations, like red hair and freckles and others, 
the first appearance of these is in Neanderthals. And so we know that all Europeans, uh, Asians from China and uh, Pacific Islanders carry DNA from Neanderthals. Um, modern humans from Africa don't though. Uh, and so, so that's kind of an interesting thing. This genetic evidence uh, kind of helps us look at shared sequence and unique markers. And we can actually track the migrations of modern humans from Africa uh, into the Middle East about 100,000 years ago into Australia and Southern Asia by 50,000 years ago, and then finally into North and South America, somewhere between 15 and 30,000 years ago. Um, so, so really kind of neat stuff, very good evidence that suggests humans are related and we're related very specifically to certain animal groups. Okay, so to summarize, humans are animals and share all the characteristics of the following groups, chordates, vertebrates, mammals, and primates. There's an extensive fossil record that links modern humans with extinct transitional forms, particularly Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalensis, and humans carry many of the same genes and traits as related, anim as related animals. We just have them developed more, you know, more uh, extensively.